the wide range of ingredients you can find in Mondstadt, and it looks like it's true! No, I'm a chef! A chef on a mission to find rare and exotic ingredients from all corners of the world! My name's Xiang Ling. I'm from Liyue Harbor. And you? Hello, my name's Paimon! Paimon! Why are you looking at me like that? What an exotic creature! Is it edible? <sighs> what a bummer. Can't eat it if it's your friend. You seem like good friends. I have a good friend too, called Goba. Isn't that the name of a Liyue snack? <laughs> Both the snack and my friend have a special place in my heart. Anyway, can you do some hunting for me? There's lots of game around here that would be amazing to cook with. I can't catch anything to save my life, and I don't want to miss out. Oh, sounds like a bit of an ordeal. Don't be like that. Come on, I'll whip you up a tasty snack later. Ooh, you had me a tasty snack. Don't worry, we're the bestest hunters ever. <laughs> don't worry about it. Your friend has already given me a response. I don't care how it's done, so long as you bring me back some raw meat. Great! Then I'll leave you to it. Deep fry with mushrooms? Ooh, and I wonder how well it goes with sine condensate. Paimon thinks she's forgotten about us. Uh, sorry. I got all excited thinking about new recipes. As promised, a tasty snack. Go on, try it. And tell me what you think. Are we your food testers now? Oh, gosh. This is delicious. Can you tell us how to make it? <laughs> sure. The only thing is I haven't written down the recipe yet. Hmm... I got it! I'll make another one now so you can watch. I'm sure you'll pick it up straight away. This seems pretty hard to make. It'll take more than that to learn how to make it. And we don't have a frying pan or any condiments! Come on, it's simple. We can fry on a slab of stone and cook using some boar fat. Build a stove from rocks. Use dry grass for kindling, twigs for firewood. Sweet flowers will do for sugar. As for salt, I found a load of rock salt in a cave the other day. And there's still plenty left. <laughs> I just can't help myself when there's a chance to try something new. But I can't exactly bring my whole kitchen with me every time I leave the house, either. Give me a second while I get everything ready. Hey! What do you think? Is the boar's natural habitat? You can't hunt them here! You'll send them all running. We hunters know better than to kill the chicken to get at the egg. Oh, I get it. The freshest, best quality meat comes from free-range boars that grow up in the environment nature intended for them. If they all ran off, it would be a major blow to gastronomy. N no, to all mankind. I'm sorry. I got excited and didn't think of the impact we'd have. <sighs> you should apologize to Draff. As our leader, he always stresses the importance of respecting the rules of the hunt. I'm afraid he is very upset right now. I made a mistake, and I should go and apologize. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll cook up some more tasty snacks for you once this is over. Okay, don't worry. Paimon will remember even if you forget. Draff ought to be in Springvale. Let's go!
Mr. Traff. This was all my fault. Ooh, he's gonna let her have it. Maestro? <laughs> You're too kind. I just try to cook things that are cheap and cheerful. Mm, I don't know. I only ever think about how to make tasty dishes. I never limit myself to specific ingredients, and I don't know the first thing about promoting anything. The issue is... What would you think if I added a bit of slime condensate? There's no such thing as normal ingredients to me. You can turn anything into a delicacy if you cook it in the right way. I will not stand for having my creativity shackled by what ingredients I can and can't use. <laughs> Food cooked like that is destined to be boring. Period. You know, we did come to apologize. Couldn't you be a little more flexible? <sighs> it's one thing to apologize, but it's another thing entirely to change the way I approach cooking. Mmm, what's that smell? It's gorgeous! Hello! May I have a taste of your delicious cooking? <sighs> Sorry, I've taken all the orders I can for the next few days. The earliest I could put you down for is seven days from now. Is that okay? Wow, it must be delicious if it's that popular. Yeah, good point. Why does Draft want Zhang Ling to help when Springville already has this lady? Hmm, maybe he feels that Mondstadt cuisine can't compete with that of Tavat's biggest business hub, Luya Harbor. But I disagree. I don't think my cooking is at all inferior to anyone else's. Well then, show me what you got. <laughs> maybe I could give you some feedback. Sorry, but customer feedback like, oh, that tasted good, is no use to me. If I wanted feedback, I would ask a professional chef. <gasps> Hang on, are you... Sheng Ling? That's me! <gasps> it's really you! Well, I guess you do know what you're doing when it comes to cooking meat, then. As it happens, I have one of today's prime cuts remaining. So tell me, how would you cook this? That depends on the ratio of fat to meat. With this cut, I would probably roast it over a hot stone with a little salt, some joyun chili, and kingsin flour. Kingsin flour? But the melted fat would make the flavor of the flowers ten times stronger than when eaten raw. It would overpower everything. I know, that's why it's a garnish. I would never marinate the meat in it. I've tried it before. If you baste the petals in oil and then cook them with the right heat and duration, it gets rid of the bitterness completely and leaves you with a lovely crispy topping. Then throw in some joyun chilies grown at a high altitude where the low humidity and varying temperatures lends them a unique dry heat. The petals absorb the saltiness from the sea salt, the chili spice, and the umami of the tender freshly grilled steak while also adding a floral aftertaste. Uh, that's pure overkill! You're going all out on the trimmings and doing no justice to the meat whatsoever! Who wants to eat a roast when you can taste everything except the roast? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stop arguing! <laughs> well, there's only one surefire way out of a cooking dispute! I declare a cook-off! Suits me! If you can't beat my cooking, it'll show that draft was clearly wrong about you! All right! But if I win, you have to use my winning dish to promote Springvale. And if you lose, you have to add my winning dish to the Wanmin menu. 
with a caption saying, This special addition to the Wan Mean menu is generously provided by Chef Brooke of Springvale, meat expert. Hm. It's a deal! I'm off to get ingredients. I will see you all. Wait! Wait! Let's try and catch up.
I still have a lot to do at the guild. How about you two? No, no! Don't eat me! You're... you're human? The entire floor's defenses have been broken. I thought it was the Abyss Order attacking. How did you guys know the liars here? The place is being kept is locked up tight. If you're after the key, keep going further into the ruins, but don't come after me! I don't know which one of the guards has it, but I'm sure you can find the guards and find out for yourselves. This guy looks like he's about to wet himself. You, you just worry about yourselves. One of the Eleven is already in Mondstadt. Signora, when she gets her hands on you, she's gonna string you up and torture you. When that time comes, don't you dare say a word about me. Did he say Senora? What a strange name. Number 8 of the Eleven goes by the name Senora. The fact that the Fatuid can run amok across the Seven Nations like they do is entirely because of the Eleven. We need to act quickly before she gets wind of what's going on. Attack me? Uh... I am a proud citizen of Snezhnaya. I will not falter.
you how'd you get in here never heard of that association before what are you lot doing here oh keep talking hmm. and just how do you plan to borrow it hmm <laughs> Think you can look down your nose at me, huh? The will of Shneznaya is as solid as the permafrost. I will not yield.
You rats scurry out from. Senora's not going to tolerate this kind of interference in our affairs. So I'll be the one to take care of you, save her the trouble of having to deal with you herself. He was here a second ago. Senora is going to end you. The songs bards sing of your demise will be so terrifying. The people of Mondstadt will never sleep again for the nightmares they give them. Big talk for a guy who still ran off in the end. Chicken. <laughs>
Welcome back! Oh, this is the Holy Liar! You managed to retrieve it! The pattern of flowing wind carved on the rosewood, and the strings still feel cool to the touch, too! Ah, oh, the memories. What do you think, Venti? Can you summon Devalin? Mm, although this liar is the real thing, I doubt that it's going to work. As you can see, the liar has been through a thousand years of history. Its animal power has run dry. In this condition, you couldn't play music fit for even Diluc's tavern with it. Bards fight to get on the stage of my tavern. Don't make assumptions. Uh, is that really important right now, Master Diluc? And you! Did you just borrow the Holy Liar to play music for drunkards to hear? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> anyway, we won't be able to call Devalin with it. The Liar itself is fine, but the strings... You're up, Outlander. Relax, it's not broken. It's just that the intensity of its animal power has greatly diminished. Do you still have Devalin's teardrop crystal with you? Great! Try to use it on the Holy Liar! This youthful glow. Praising yourself? Really? I was talking about the Holy Liar. Thanks to our traveler friend having purified the crystal, the Holy Liar won't continue to lose power. That said, its power is far from replenished. It'd be great if we could get more tears. I can surmise that Devalin will already be crying. Suffering alone in some deserted place. <sighs> Devalin. Poor baby. This is not something that an honorary knight can accomplish alone. I will mobilize the rest of the knights to assist. When you get the teardrop crystal, please let our honorary knight perform the purification process. Heroes supporting each other and setting out on a journey together. How exciting! Let me come up with a song for you! Is that all you're going to do? Just sing? Hmm, wouldn't be much of a bard if I didn't, now would I? <laughs> You're so cheeky. You deserve an ugly nickname. Oh, Paimon knows. From now on, you'll be known as Tone Deaf Bard. <laughs> <laughs> 